This Blazor Server database tutorial will highlight things that I have learned. You may want to pause the video while viewing this slide and the next slide. Using a DB context factory is probably the most important consideration for Blazor Server databases. We will look at setting the connection strings and creating and updating the database in both the development and production environments. Again, you may want to pause the video to view this slide. Let's create a new project in Visual Studio 2022. We want this to be a Blazor server app, not a WebAssembly app. So let's go and create this. I've given it a name here and a location. Let's go to Next. And we're not going to do authentication in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and create this project. OK, we can get rid of this. And now we are ready to get started. Our application is going to be a simple list of volunteers for our organization. So you can see by looking up here that I've made some changes. One thing I've done is just create a, a basic class here to hold our volunteers with a volunteer name and a phone number. I've also gone into Nougat and installed a couple packages, so Entity Framework Core and the SQL Server portion. And we're also going to need a DB context for this. So I've gone in and added this class, named it App DB Context, which extends DB Context. And you can see that right here with the DB set of volunteers. Finally, I went into Program CS and I've added this section right here. So we've got ourselves set up here to grab our connection string by using the configuration, which is the builder configuration. And um, in this case here, I've called it default. And then we've added this DB context factory because that's what we want to use instead of a DB context when we're working with a Blazor server app. So we now have the class and the context and everything set up here for a DB context factory. So now we can go on to the next steps. OK, you can see I've added and updated two files here, the app settings.json. I've added this connection string section. And in there, I've just put in a standard uh, connection string for SQL Express. And I've given it the name of the database that's going to be created, Ken Blazor DB Tutorial. And then the rest of this is just what you normally use. Um, I discovered the hard way that I needed this trust server certificate equal true when running on my development system. I don't know if that will be the case on yours or not. I've also created the volunteer service. Now this one's a bit more complicated and really gets to the heart of what we're trying to talk about. Injecting uh, you know, dependency injection for a context factory. So I've got this set up to use um, dependency injection to get that context factory. And then I've created these methods that are essentially the service for accessing and updating the database. So get all volunteers. And this is just standard stuff except for what we do here is use the context factory to get a simple DB context. And using that DB context, we do what we need to do with the database. In this case here, we're just getting a list of all the volunteers um, sorted by the volunteer name. And every one of these is the, is the same thing. So. If we want to add a volunteer, a new volunteer, we first of all use the factory to get a 
a brand new context, DB context, and we use that context to add the volunteer that was passed into us. And okay, we're ready to start creating the database. To do that, we're going to need these this package here that I've installed now, the Entity Framework Core.tools. So I've installed that, and I actually went into here into the package manager, the console, and I've already run this command now, the add migration command for the initial create. It's already been successful. And you can see it created this migrations folder over here. And now we have to run another command. Let me get it in there. We have to update the database. And as soon as we do that, we'll, we'll look at my SQL Server Management Studio and see if it really got created. So let's run this. That command ran successfully, and here I have SQL Server Management Studio up, and you can see this new database that we mentioned earlier in my JSON connection string. And here's the columns for the volunteer name and the volunteer phone. So we're getting close now. We have a database, and we need to start creating some razor pages. We actually need to do one other thing before we start creating Razor pages. We need to go into Program CS, and we have to add this line that I'm going to add right here. This will allow us to use dependency injection for our volunteer service. And while I'm at it, we're, we might clean up some of this other stuff. We're not going to need the weather forecast service and we we probably don't need these counters and fetch data and stuff the weather forecast so i may clean all these out of here but the main thing is we're adding this as a scoped um, service here for blazer server um, so we can access volunteer service with dependency injection okay as you can see here i've created three razor pages and we also have to make a little change in the nav menu let's start with volunteers.razor it's going to be the uh, razor component razor page that displays the list of uh, volunteers so up at the top I've got this page directive which will help with navigation um, we've got a using statement that we need and we're injecting the volunteer service and you you know this is just normal HTML here if I scroll down a bit you can see what we're gonna do here is in the on initialized async method we're going to use our service to get all the volunteers async and it's going to display them on this page to get to this page, we're going to use the nav menu. And I've, I've eliminated here for the counter and the fetch data. And I've added instead a, a reference to go to volunteers. So let me, before we even look at these two here, let me go ahead and launch this and you'll start to get the idea. Here's the web server. Sir. <laughs> The web app running let me click on volunteers and we don't have any in here yet we're going to have to add some so I'm going to show you in a minute uh, the other two razors that I've added in here to add volunteers and delete them so here's the add volunteer again we have similar page directives to get here you can see what the navigation path would be to get to this page and we got our using statement and we've injected the volunteer service and the navigation manager because down in the code um, this screen is going to actually display a couple buttons to um, add a volunteer create a volunteer or also cancel 
And so down here under cancel, we'll just navigate back to the list of volunteers. And if we create a volunteer, we'll use our service to create it. And then we'll navigate back and it'll all show up in the list. Finally, we'll look at this delete volunteers. Uh, delete volunteer and again we have a page directive only this time we're giving it a parameter so we know which one to delete and we're injecting the same things um, again when you see this it'll make more sense but this is just standard HTML you should be familiar with that and down here again in the on initialized async we're going to use the volunteer service uh, to get that volunteer and that's what's going to populate information up here. And when they click the delete button, we'll be go down here to this function and we'll use our volunteer service to delete volunteer async. So let's um, take a look at all this right now. I've started the app. If we go over here to volunteers, we can see we have none yet, so we could add one right here. Let me fill this in a minute. Okay, I filled it in. Let's save this button, and you can see he got added in here. And if we want to delete him, we can click this delete button. Are you sure you want to delete this record? Let's delete it. And so now we have finally tied everything together. If you look back at our objectives for the development environment, you can see we've already shown how to set connection string and how to use the migrations feature to create the database. I've decided not to show you how to do this, but you can research a DB context database. Ensure created is a way inside of your code to force the database to be created but I really don't recommend it. Uh, it might be perfectly fine for a test environment. Um, you can research it. Note that if you do it this way, the database cannot be later updated using migrations. So the last thing we want to do here is update the database and show how to do that. So if you look at our volunteer class here, you'll see maybe we decided, oh, you know, we should have added the volunteer email address. So I'm going to put that in there a minute, and that will be how we update the database. We'll update it with that new property. So here's that property. The next step will be to use migrations to sync up our database with this class. Okay, here's SQL Server Management Studio showing we have the name and the phone but not the email yet. So let's slide this out of the way and let's go to Package Manager, go to the console, and here's the commands we want to enter. The first one to add this migration. And I'll just pause this while the migration is running. Okay, that completed successfully. And now we want to update the database. So let's run that command. And I will slide this back over here and we can refresh uh, this database. So we'll refresh it, look at the tables and the volunteers columns. It now has all three columns. Naturally, the next step would be to go into all of our pages and do what's necessary to add those columns in there. I'm not going to do that. The point here of this video was to show you how to create databases and access them and move them over to production. So at the moment, I'm not going to change these things to include that new database column. It turns out that I'm going to have to change these uh, pages and add our new column because I made one other problem uh, when we set up this database here, 
that all these things cannot be null. And so that'll be a little problem when we run this app. I mean, we could solve that various ways, but for right now, we're just going to tolerate the fact that all these fields have to be entered. Otherwise, you get an exception. And so I've added this email into the volunteer page for creating, adding a volunteer. And I've also added it in the list. So let's run this a minute and I'll show you what I mean. Here's the browser. Let's do volunteers. I think that um, I've added a couple, so that's nice. Um, if we go to add new, here's, here's the problem. We can go and put somebody in here. Um, but if we try to save this without an email, with it being null, we're going to get a bad exception. So let me save this, and it's throwing an exception. So we can deal with that, but uh, that's not the purpose of this video. So for right now, you just have to enter data in all those fields. The easiest way to have solved this problem would have been to make these fields nullable with this question mark. Um, e this is even being recommended here. So I'm not going to do that, but, but that's probably what I should have done from the beginning. Um, obviously the name, you, you, you need a name, but these two could probably have been nullable. And that would have solved our problem. I don't want to do it right now, but um, just wanted to show you that. Before we move into part two and how to get everything into our production environment on Microsoft Azure, I want to show you something here in this host chtml file. Uh, render mode here is set to server pre-rendered. and um, I'm going to show you one situation where you might want to change these to just plain old uh, server instead of server pre-rendered. So let me show you a scenario right now. Here's the volunteers page, which displays the list of volunteers. Suppose we wanted it to be the very first screen that came up in a window, so um, the first page. So it would essentially be the index.razor. Now I'm not going to do all these changes. I'm just going to describe it to you. But let's pretend that this is the index.razor and the page here is just the slash. There's no volunteers on it. What I have learned in this on initialized async, if you go back here to this and this is set to server pre-rendered and you're in the index uh, razor page, this on initialized async is going to get called twice. And actually it's only going to happen the first time that the page gets loaded. And if you jump back and forth between nav items, after that it'll get called once. But that very first time it gets called twice. And that can be quite troublesome depending on what you're doing in here, especially accessing database or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can look it up if you want to. Um, uh, if you change these to render mode equals server, then that does not occur. You'll have to look up, Google it, find out pros and cons for each you know, choice here, but just something to be aware of. We're now ready to push everything to a production environment on Microsoft Azure. And um, the objectives here are we've got to get an empty database in Azure and we want to choose an inexpensive tier for that. We don't want to get charged for that just for playing around for this tutorial. And we got to remember to delete all those resources when we get done because we don't want to get charged. We're going to publish our web app, the Blazor Server Database Tutorial to Azure. And then we'll configure Azure to use a connection string that overrides the app settings.json because obviously we need a different connection string to access this SQL database in Azure. And originally in our objectives, I have said we'll use 
SQL Server Management Studio will use the import export function to get it copied from dev over to prod. And um, maybe we'll do that, maybe we won't. It's, it's not the greatest thing to be doing probably. Um, number one, you're getting all the test data, which you don't want. In the future, you really can't update the production database that way. So what I've decided to do instead or in addition is show how you would actually use script migration to create and update the production database. Because I'd rather have two short videos instead of one long video, I'm going to end this and call it part one. And part two, the next video, will, will show us how we do all these things on this slide.